talking about two feasts. It's the Feast of Pentecost, that's the Feast of Weeks, mm -hmm. and then it's the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end, which is Feast of Tabernacles. You got that? So it's really talking about all three feasts. This is powerful to me, y'all. So on the seventh day, which we are in, yeah. we're in a time of rest. Yeah. We're in a season that before we yet, oh, the plowman is going to overtake the reaper. So come on now. Come on now. Then why you yet praying? We'll get the answer. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's when you begin to understand and really know Him. That's when you begin to go on and to know the Lord. Right. That speaks of the third day. That's exactly you know, third what day it is. People. Um, yeah, the, the earnest of our inheritance is when we begin to understand. Like you mentioned a while ago, I like what you mentioned. I remember a time when you just, you know, you just prayed. You prayed because you knew it was in the Bible, and, and you, you heard other people gathering and prayed, and so you just prayed it. But you didn't understand it. You didn't. You weren't captured by it. You weren't yoked to it. That's what I'm looking for. You weren't really yoked to it, you know. And so you were just praying out of what you learned five years ago and what you heard, and you were just, you know, doing that. And I remember a time in my life when I did that. And then when I finally got that moment where it really, you know, I had, had that epiphany moment to really grab it and understand where it began to open up things in me. That's an awesome a moment. That's the glories in the heavens open it up, you know. And that's your Father in heaven. Wow, that's, that's a beautiful thing. It is. Verse, 24, uh, verse 23 says, you all your who? Male children or men children appear before the what? The Lord God, the God of Israel. Now, prophetically, we know at that time, of course, it was actually literal men. And then when he spoke to the men, he spoke to everybody. So they, you know what I'm saying? So don't think it's a, it's, it's a gender bias. It's not what I'm saying. But prophetically, it's speaking of what? Perfect man. The spirit. The maturity that we need to have. Y'all got that? Come on. We need to appear, what, three times? Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles before wow. the Lord. Amen? Three times. Now check this out. For I will do what? Pass out nations. Nations. What? Before you and enlarge your borders. Enlarge your borders. You need to underline that. Cast out nations. Yes. And you do what? Enlarge, enlarge your borders. borders. Please underline that. If you got a nice Bible, you can write it. You might have to buy you a Bible that you can write it. Don't get that. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And it says, neither should what? Any man covet your land. Now, underline that. Wow. Boy, see how I, 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 these, these are truths. That, that that really, it brings you to rest. Yeah, come that on. Knowing that God said because you kept the feast, yeah. because you kept Passover, come you on. understood the death, burial, resurrection. Come on. You kept Pentecost because you understand the significance of the Holy Spirit in your life. Yeah. You kept tabernacles. You know what I'm saying? Christ because you understand Christ through you. Uh -huh. this, the habitation of God, the abiding right. presence of God. Because yeah. you understand that. Come he on. said, I cast nations out. Come on now. Oh boy, oh boy. He cast nations out. Now, maybe, maybe the nation is not uh, the Jebusites or the Perizzites or the Hittites. Maybe your nation is stagnation. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe condemnation. Maybe opinion nation. Maybe fascination. Yes. Maybe discrimination. Denomination. Maybe, uh huh. Maybe denomination. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> maybe that's the nation he's going to get. Maybe alienation, because some of y'all are real. Oh, yeah. You yeah. like to be yourself. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe procrastination. There's a lot of nations. There's about 14 of them. <laughs> I ain't got time to go through all of them. But those are the nations that he said if you understand the power of. Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, wow. that you that you understand being converted, consecrated, wow. Wow. Yes, yes. and Christ's life on the inside of you. Yes, yes. He said, when Christ becomes an all, he said, I will take these things out of your life yes. and remove them. That's powerful, boo boo. Mm -hmm. Now you say you'll drag out your enemies before you. Yes. You know? And um, that's okay. Because three times a year, as you just mentioned, you have to keep those. You have to come up to them each time for, I mean, three times a year and bring everything, all the men of sin, all your men, bring them all mm -hmm. to the Lord that he may deal with them. Yep. Am I right? You're right, you're right. So did he say he want to enlarge the borders? Yes. Wow. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You mean he can't enlarge me before he removes some things from me? 
See, I put up on Facebook uh, uh, maybe a few days ago, I talked about a millionaire. See, some of us want millions, but we can't handle thousands because of the nations that are in our land. You got to understand how God works. You have to eat the old store to get the new store. You have to, you know what I'm saying? So if you don't make full use of what he's giving you, if you're not a faithful steward of what he's giving you, yeah, you can sit around all you want to, looking up at the sky, thinking one day you're going to have that big old 24,000 square foot house. Keep thinking that. And you can't handle 400 feet. 400 square feet of a house is, 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 is oh well. Then, then you're trying to look for a guy to bring more, and you're not le learning how to sow. Remember now, sowing and reaping. You know what I remember? A prayer, I remember a prayer that was running rampant back when you first get saved. Everybody pray the J-Pass prayer. Yeah. Bless me, Lord. Enlarge my tent. Enlarge my borders. Everybody, when you first confess them, that's, that was your prayer. That was your, you know, that was you laid down and you got up on that prayer. Oh, bless me, Lord. And what you just mentioned about, you know, how we have to go through these steps before we can think that anything's going to get enlarged to us. We want enlargement before we want process or, you know, all the other things that we're supposed to do. Cause and effect. We're looking for the blessings of the Lord. Yeah. Cause and effect. Uh -huh. So he wants to enlarge our borders. That don't mean he's talking about enlarging our real estate. He's talking about enlarging our mind. Yes. Yeah. My borders is what I think. Tell, tell, tell your neighbor, God want to enlarge you. God want to enlarge you. You got to cast the nations out. But it says, neither should any man want what? Desire your land. Oh, oh can't nobody preach like Apostle Steve. You know why? Because I know the I know the I know the mysteries that are in the scriptures waiting to be revealed to me. I understand that I'm in the light and the favor of his continents because I'm joyful. I'm excited about the peace and the spiritual truth and symbolism that's connected to God. So no man will desire my land. There's nobody who can take over your assignment. Maybe if we understood the principles of Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles in most churches, we wouldn't have church splits. I ain't got time to go there. But see, when you understand your identity is connected to the feast, nobody can be like me. Nobody can preach, teach, think like me because my land that God has given me, I honor God. I go up before the Lord at the appointed times. I get on my face. I seek God. I listen to the Lord. Nobody can be like me. Guess what? Same thing for you. You do what's required. Nobody can take your spot. Y'all understand what I just said? Yes. Huh? Well, Amen. do what's required. Do what's required. Yes. Yes. When thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God three times in the year. In other words, in Moffat's translation, follow the script. Uh -huh. Do what's required. Yes. Huh? Walk in a measure of obedience. Uh -huh. These are the things that's going to transpire. Now, I wanted to set this backdrop because the one we're going to glean from is the consecrated life, the Pentecost. Come on. Because we're not going to have tabernacles. It's the abiding presence. He abides with us now, but I'm talking about the manifestation. Yeah. God is in every place, but the manifest presence of God is not everywhere. Yeah. How many ever know? It's times I've gone to the mall and I've tried to find somebody, and we're in the same piece of land, same property, but we haven't 